Hey, good morning, everyone. It is Monday, and we are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer. All right, Jim, let's begin with your Real Money article, tax reform. I mean, no one wants to get anything done. This is incredible, because going into September, they were talking about, the administration was talking about, listen, this is going to be the month you're going to see a lot of a lot of big moves. Now, there is a big six conference. I mean, please, none of the big six agrees on anything. Uh, repeal, it came back up. Repeal and replace. I mean, I have Michael Nidor from Centene, which is a company that does actually the best in the current regime, but would do great in the future regime, whatever it is. And he just said, look, this is a total non-starter. People don't even understand what it is. I just thought when that came up, it was once again a sign that tax reform is nowhere uh, because they can't get away in Congress. They can't get away from the notion of talking about Obamacare. The president can't get away from the notion of sports radio. So you just okay. really have a situation where the actual issues that we thought were going to be brought up seem irrelevant. So this inaction hasn't really affected the stock market so far this year, but will it in the coming months? Uh, no, because I think that what it does is defers it to 2018, but it is just, I think, from the American people's perspective, uh, a sign of dysfunction which alienates people. And when the, the uh, focus is on standing, kneeling, and the national right. anthem, as Mark Cuban said on, on Squawk on the Street, it's a divisive issue. Uh, uh, the NBA starts October 20th. The, the NBA has really been out of its way under Stern and Silver of urging players to speak their mind. So uh, it will be very important to see what Jerry Jones does tonight uh, because he has said, listen, he supports the president. Uh, and remember, the president came out very strong and said they should throw the son of the bitches out. He's waiting for an owner to kick somebody out. Jerry Jones, I know him. Uh, uh, he's a terrific owner, and he's a very big, you know, he always, he chides me on fantasy by saying that it's fantasy is like what he feels. He gets, gets very, very emotional. He had talked about one point, not joking around, just talking about the suicidal uh, aspect of losing, which he was like trying to say, I'm um, not making light of suicide at all, but just saying that there are the emotions that are involved. So, I mean, will he come out and be with the president? I think this is really important because Bob Kraft is a good friend of the president, and he came out strongly for what the players are doing. All right, Jim, we'll watch how that plays out. Moving to individual stocks, what did you make of General Motors, the upgrade by Deutsche Bank? You know, look, I, I think that this is one of those upgrades where you see a stock flying, it's breaking out. And you come up with a thesis, uh, and this is the autonomous vehicle thesis and how much it's worth to GM. Uh, I would point out that if that piece had not come out, I think would argue that the, um, the, the, the slowdown of the actual sports utility vehicles would have been far more important, uh, as witnessed the fact that there's a Tennessee, a third shift in Tennessee that's been throttled back, which is rather amazing when you think about CarMax's numbers and how we thought that there'd be good demand coming from uh, the hurricane yeah. in Houston. So uh, this is very, the short term is bad for, uh, I would say, the short term, you don't want to be in GM if they're cutting back shifts. Uh, do I buy the autonomous vehicle reason to own GM? GM's a very cheap stock. GM and Ford are the two cheapest stocks in the market. The third I follow that's cheap, if you back out the cash, is Apple. Huh. Well, and speaking of Apple, uh, what do you make of concerns about Apple's current quarter with Jim the iPhone? Jim Suva correctly put everything together. I happen to like Jim very much. And Sid, he's a good guy. Uh, and the city note just puts in perspective, which is that he doesn't change his price target. He shuffles around the earnings, and obviously there's this uh, kind of like confusion about which phone you want. Um, I always come back to owning Apple, don't trade it, and that it's a great consumer product company. You should no more care about which product iteration they have than on the different tierings of a lot of consumer product companies. And I continue to think that Apple's right. By the way, they've thrown away Nvidia and they've thrown away Broadcom during this period, and I don't think. That that those are things you just throw away. Mm. I mentioned those because all three are Action Alerts right. names mm. that we are reiterating seem very right here. And Action Alerts Plus had some great analysis on Apple back on Friday. Thank you, yes. You know, I, I, Zephima is uh, a guy who joined me um, a little while ago. Uh, and then Jeff Marks is a guy who's really our central uh, guy who was terrific enough to do write that note on Friday. I, I don't think people realize we have a fabulous team that we've been building uh, in, in Action Alerts. And uh, Jeff's analysis on Apple, I thought, was a must. And I think that people have to read it and understand. Uh, not unlike his Allergan analysis this morning, which is very, very important. ActionAlertsPlus.com. All right, Jim, speaking of the club, uh, General Electric selling its industrial solutions you know, look, business. I think that John Flannery uh, takes to heart the idea 
that perhaps he shouldn't wait until the November meeting yeah. in order to be able to put things in order. Why? Because I know he reads the research. I know he reads the sell ratings. I know he's worried about the cash flow. I know he, he doesn't want to put the dividend in jeopardy. He's moving very, very quickly. The corporate jets sent a huge message, huge message. But more importantly, the industrial solutions, these were considered to be inviolate. I remember interviewing uh, Jeff Immelt about, is there anything that you can sell? Anything. Mm. And the answer was no, 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 no. Well, suddenly here's 2.6 billion just you know, falls into their lap. Obviously, Flannery's looking at the earnings that is going to uh, be lost by that and not thinking that that's what matters. Instead, he wants the cash in. There have been questions about the amount of cash that General Electric has on hand. This is something that Flannery's making a priority. I think that Flannery's being underestimated on Wall Street. I think the people, I have a friend who worked with Flannery who just said over and over again, this man is rigorous. He's not a politician. He's not out there giving speeches. He's out there finding new ways to augment cash flow, which makes me feel better about the position. We did buy some. I know everyone's written off GE. Maybe that's when you have to get a little more excited. Now, the notes about GE are that the earnings have to come down. There is going to be a reset, I think, for earnings. But the fact is, and I know that they didn't make the GE the dividend. They kind of changed the language, saying it's a priority uh, from being a must. But what I like is Flannery's taking action ahead of when people thought he would. Well, so then will this November meeting be sort of an inflection point for the stock? Well, I mean, I think he has to reset expectations. Not unlike the way Starbucks has to re -expe reset expectations, but Starbucks fell from 64 to 53 on the notion of reset. GE fell from 30 down to 23 on the notion of reset. Sometimes the reset gets built in and the analysts have to upgrade or change their view once you get the reset. All right, meanwhile, Jim, what did you make of Disney's threats to pull content from LTs? Well, you know, this is just kind of one of these battles. I happen to be an LT subscriber. This is one of those battles where uh, Disney's trying to show you uh, you really need ESPN. Uh, and how do I feel about it? I need ESPN. Uh, my, my weekend revolves around ESPN. And, and I would hate to see, uh, it, I, I would sure not want to lose it. But it, it, but it does matter tremendously, and I think that they're going to win. I think Disney wins. Is Disney more confident in these negotiations now that they have a controlling stake in BAM Tech, per no, se? No, I don't think those have much to do that. Actually, Disney, uh, that is something that we don't really know what they're going to do with yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I do think that uh, I like the acquisition very, very much. Meanwhile, uh, Target reaffirming their guidance. That was pretty yeah, incredible. People, I think, were way, spending way too much time talking about the idea that uh, Target, by raising rates, raising the amount that they pay people, is going to hurt. I think that what hurts is training costs. And mm -hmm. so when you raise what people pay per hour, then you end up with a much, much more satisfied workforce and people don't leave. And I think that that's what matters. That's what Walmart did. Uh, I am, was more inclined to like Target. Now remember, I think Target has too many stores. I think Target has to close stores. I think Target has to go with the smaller form. If you go to Brooklyn, you'll see the big stores really kind of uh, the small the small scale store is really excellent. Uh, by the way, as I mentioned in Stop Trading. The piece mm. by Matthew Boss about TJX and raising same store sales, I emphasize the raw stores number raise. He was in Europe with TJX and raw stores. When you close stores and you close square footage, the winners are Burlington, they're TJX, and they're Ross. Excellent piece by Matthew Boss, JP T Morgan. TJX, your favorite retailer right now? Uh, yes. Now, that's been wrong in the sense that uh, Ross Stores has done better, uh, but I do because they had a great same store sales. They had a really good last quarter, but I think TJX is by far the cheapest, and they've got HomeSense. They're doing so many things. There's a huge seller of TJX, gigantic seller. I don't know who he is, but he never backs away. He lives at the 73 level, and he's crushed the stock. He should back away. All right, Jim, let's move on to earnings to watch. Staying with retail for a little bit or apparel, and what are you expecting from Nike? Okay, from Nike, I don't, uh, Nike could have a good number, but then people will sell it again because of Adidas. Uh, I bought a pair of Allbirds mm -hmm. this weekend. Why do I mention that? Because they just got a lot of funding. It's direct to consumer. The sneaker industry remains in flux. I don't want to touch it. Um, there are too many players in the sneaker industry. All right, Jim, we talked about Apple and the chip makers earlier. What are you expecting from Micron, which reports Okay, tomorrow? Micron, I think, is going to have a blowout number. I think people are going to have to raise their numbers because there's still a lot of people who felt that that Micron, uh, that DRAM prices were going to roll over. Uh, remember, their Flash and DRAM, Flash remains really good. 
DRAM remains really good, only disk drives are bad, so I think Micron will be good. By the way, let's I, on it, switching topics entirely, let's talk about what David Faber did, broke today. Sprint and T-Mobile, mm. still very much on. This is moving Verizon, this is moving ATT. The notion of consolidation, the notion that there will be a T-Mobile acquisition of someone is driving that group higher. I have historically liked Verizon and ATT as ways to be able to capture income. I reiterate that I like them as ways to capture income. John Leisure, being the head of any company that is in the phone business is going to be a very tough competitor because he's so great. <laughs> he is. He's a great uh, person yeah. on Twitter too. Yes. <laughs> All right. And then we also had Mark Cuban this morning and yes. Mark talking about uh, what's going on in the NFL and Mark Cuban talking about players speaking their mind uh, and the president should go read a book. I thought that was hysterical analysis. That was hysterical. And Jim, before we go, congratulations to your Eagles. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, it was, uh, this is one where everybody's there and the Eagles fell apart in the fourth quarter and the grit of a, the grit of a team is to come back and I think that not enough uh, people are, are talking about Alshon Jeffrey uh, by uh, getting out of bounds with one second left, knowing where you are in the field, and then Jake Elliott just uh, hitting a field yeah. goal. I posted a game-winning field goal that he had in high school. There are people who know this guy. Congratulations to Howie Roseman for picking him up when uh, Sturgis went down. Not a lot of people have him in my league. Maybe you got to rethink who the kicker should be for your league. Although he did miss a 30-yarder before that, which made us feel that a 61-yarder was out of uh, range. And remember, that is the uh, Eagles franchise record. Hey, Jim, how is your league doing, by the way? <laughs> um, well, my, my fantasy team had 160 points. Right now, high man, uh, Regina Gilgan, who's the executive producer, uh, who uh, is um, tonight they dine in hell is her team and mine's the ski daddies and, and she may be able to top me but I had uh, my team's gelling and my team is Russell Wilson as quarterback he finally came through my team is uh, you know Beckham finally came through two catches that were really important they finally are throwing to Cookie up there in the Patriots that mattered tremendously um, and I've got uh, Ty you know I've got Cohen for uh, Chicago he didn't get all the touches I'd like uh, I, I, I've got a, a pretty good team and I think that people uh, underestimated my team going in I will have to make a change in defense because the Eagles are so beaten up uh, and I hope the best for uh, Darren Sproles by the way who uh, did break his arm this Sunday it's just like managing a stock portfolio yeah well I mean <laughs> you got to have a diversification and I certainly have that all right Jim we're rooting for you thank you thank you so much thank you. for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned please head back to the street.com <laughs>